today. So I need to sharpen this plate. So I have my sharpening tool. I use a grinder with a curved edge on the top. You could actually use a flat thin stone. It don't have to be just like that. It does not take much to grind this. To me, sharpening blades is an easy thing. I don't know, you know, why people have problems with it or, you know, they criticize me for sharpening them. I don't have a problem sharpening. And the way I look at it is like this. Seven dollars is cheap to sharpen a blade. But if I sharp, if I cut hard, you know, cut every day and all day long, I'm going to use at the minimum two blades a day. Two blades a day adds fourteen dollars to the price of things. And what is that? Fourteen times five? Twenty, five, six, seven, that's seventy dollars um, a week and I don't want to spend that. Okay, because I can use seventy dollars for something else. I can buy all the gas I, I need for a month with seventy dollars for this chainsaw or for this uh, saw. So I'm going to sharpen my own blade. So now let me just uh, get you back in the stand here and uh, show you a little bit about what's going on with this. Now I know I've made a bunch of videos about sharpening, and they're all the same because I sharpen the same. So you can see there's uh, some dust on here, a little bit of uh, um, sap, but it's not like a real stiff, sticky sap. Now it is, it is sticky to the point that it, it makes the um, wood fibers stick a little bit to it, but it's not real, real bad. Now m a lot of what you see on the saw here, like that, um, let me just back you up here a little bit. The stuff that's right here, the stuff that's down there on the saw it's because there's moisture in the air I mean the humidity is very very high and because the humidity is high we end up with um, you know the sawdust sticking to everything so technically it should be cleaned off but I'm not going to be cleaning this every hour just because I'm blowing sawdust around I mean if it affects my cuts or the thickness of my cuts then I'll then I'll worry about it so anyway, this blade has been sharpened twice before, okay, so this is the third sharpening. Now I also have a setting tool that looks like a pair of pliers that I use to adjust the set of the teeth. However, because this uh, saw, I did not, this blade, I did not hit anything hard. Now that's not to say I didn't ride over something slightly. But I didn't hit anything hard enough to jar any of the teeth. And the teeth are still cutting a fairly flat cut. I'm just going to go ahead and start right at the weld. Okay. That's what I like to start at. And just sharpen it. So to me, um, I also have this file. Now I, I have a stone, but the stone wants to wear down on me pretty quickly. So you can use a file. All I'm doing is cleaning dust out of there at the moment. Um, like I say, some of this is sticking on here from moisture, and other of it is sticking on a little from a little bit of the sap from the pine. Normally, oak sap comes off fairly quickly, so you know if I spray a little WD-40 on it and run the blade, it actually blows the stuff off pretty quick. But sap uh, from pine is a little bit different. Not bad, just different. Okay, so anyway, again. You know, I'm starting where the weld is so I know where to end. And all I do is basically clean the blade off and start sharpening. I hold my finger at a certain thing I, I, so that when I key this, it's where I want it to be. And all I do is ride around that hook. That's all I do. And then I sharpen the point where the hook curled over. It's that simple. And you can complain about what I'm doing all you want. You can tell me I am too cheap to get... Uh, saw blade sharpened and you're wrong because I could buy a thousand blades any day of the week. My problem is I don't want to and that's all there is to it. And since I learned how to sharpen many many years ago things, I'm just going to sharpen it and I'll sharpen it the way I do and use it the way I want. I can get the same amount of life out of every sharpening that I get out of a new blade. It doesn't matter. So anyway, this is I don't know if you, how well you can see what I'm doing here, but now the one.
one thing that I'm looking for, and let me take the camera off here. I don't know if I can even show this to you, but now I just sharpened one, two, three, four. And if you look at the four of them, you'll see that on this one, there's a little black there. You see that black? You now it's hard to focus on that. Come on. I'll stay back a little bit. This one has no black on the face of it because it's ground nice and flat. This one has a little bit of black on it and it needs to be ground better. So the ideal thing here is when you're grinding to actually grind so that when you look at this face that it's uh, shiny metal all the way out to the point. Now you don't want to go, you know, getting on this thing and pushing too hard. It's a very light push that I'm using. You can see right above my fingernail here there's a little bit of black on the face of that right there um, I just want to clean that out there so that they look like this one there's no black on it it's basically nice and shiny all the way through and then after I'm done going down the after I'm done going down from one bearing to the other then I'll sharpen them up with the in the front with my file and I'm basically done as far as I'm concerned like I say, it's it's not a hard thing to do and it works really easy for me. And I think anybody can do it. You just got to practice. <coughs> See, what that black line on there tells you, like, the black line tells you whether you're canting up, canting down, or not hitting hard enough, okay? Uh, because that little line, you'll see it on the tooth. So as long as you have a nice flat edge there, you're, that means you're really straight with what the blade was to start off with. And then all you got to do is just sharpen the back side. So uh, I just run my finger down like I can feel this. The one here that I'm feeling in front of the weld that I have not sharpened, I can run my finger over. But I cannot move my finger over this, okay? Because I've got a sharp edge on it. Like I say, this uh, pine has some um, a little bit of sap on this tooth, so I'm going to clean these teeth out here so that when I run the blade over, I'm not hitting the sap. So what happens is the sap acts like a lubricant and it keeps the blade from cutting down to the metal. So I just want to take the sap off. And then, you know, that'll tell me where I'm at when I, while I'm cutting as well. Okay, if I wouldn't have been cutting any pine and I was cutting oak and went right to this, what I would have here is a lot easier job to do it. It's the pine sap on the inside of the tooth here. Is that it acts like a lubricant to this uh, grinding wheel. After I grind them, I run my thumb over it to see if I've missed anything. This one here, um, I don't know if you can see this. Let me turn the camera a little differently here. The one where my finger is here, when I run my thumb over that, I can slide over it. So that's, there you go, that's telling me that I need to go over it again. Now, um, all of these are catching my thumbnail. This one's a little... And that's 
that's what I use as a guide. You know, is it grabbing a hold of my thumbnail when I try to pull over it? And I have to pull my thumbnail out to get away from it. So once I do that, then I just take the file, make it sure that the file's straight against that edge. And I just run the file up and down on there. Or you can run it down if you're file happy and you want to do it a certain way, fine, I don't care. But either way, that's all I do. And I have got a nice sharp tooth on there. coming between the tooth and the file or not. You want that to be tight on there. You want the file to be that 10 degrees that's existing on the blade. Okay, so all of them feel good to me. So I just take and you know, you can see where you end it, especially when you have the, uh, the dirt on there from the sap. And I just move the blade forward here so that I can get in here and work, but this is the last tooth. So these here, I'm going to take and just run the file inside there just to get the dirt off of there. I would say that if you had a, gr a brand new file, three-sided file like this, or even a, a small flat file, there's no reason why you can't sharpen this blade with a file. I like using this carb random thing because it's real quick. on there or not but as I run the file on there you can actually see a movement of dirt come out the bottom or up out through the top depending on which way I run the file but I just want that face the edge inside here to be clean so that I can run the um, the file in there or the grinder in there I mean without anything bothering me like I say that sap acts like a lubricant when it comes to between the sap and the uh, the, car, the grinder. So there's really nothing to it, but you know, sometimes people have a hard time with it. Okay, so I can feel that, you know, these need to be sharpened. You know, you can just, like this one here is the last one I sharpened. I can't really pass by it too easily. This one here I can slide by, so I need to sharpen these. Biting into the into my thumb a little bit, not not really hard. You know, I'm not trying to draw blood, but I'm just trying to see if it's catching, and it is. What I'm trying to do is get that little piece of metal off there that rolls a 
around the edge. You can't even see it, but it's there. What you don't want to do is take the file and ride over that, even by mistake. Sometimes you see me doing it, and I gotta come back and hit it a little bit. Sometimes I have to hit it this way, not often, but sometimes, just to get that sharp point on there that I'm looking for. And if, you, if, you're, if you're fussy and you want the exact plate as you had before, I'm gonna tell you that the saw is not made cut to the tolerances that you need to have this blade exactly like brand new again. It just doesn't, the saw just doesn't notice it. Now, it's not to say that a brand new sharp blade isn't good. That's, for, you know, what I'm saying is they don't have to be perfect. That's why they're being hand sharpened. I'm good to right here then. I just pull it ahead and then I start, you know, where, wherever I left off. And I'm just pulling it away from the wheel here far enough that I can, you know, move the, the handle of the uh, file in there. But I, I'm just using the corner of the file. You, you see what I'm pulling off there. Okay, that's what's inside that tooth that has to come out because if you don't get that out of there, you can't uh, grind because it acts like a lubricant sort of. See how much of it's coming off there. Somebody had uh, mentioned last week, I think, the comment where they don't like the uh, fibers that come off the edge of the board. They, they say they have to sand them. Well, yeah, you do have to sand them. But once the wood's dried, those fibers come off really quickly. And the reason that the fibers come on there to begin with is the amount of moisture. Uh, you, you, I mean, you can see there's a lot of moisture in the log itself. So, you know, that's what's causing those fibers. They don't roll off the blade quickly because of the sap. And I found out that uh, putting uh, lubricant in there doesn't seem to make that change and that's why I don't bother moving this when I go to sharpen or when I go to uh, cut. It just doesn't seem to make a difference to me. You got to realize that there's one point that's flat that's hitting the middle of that. If, if I get black on the top, I got to raise it up or tilt it. Either way, you know, and if you can do it quickly, and I'm doing it as I go here. All I got to do is look at it, and you know, as soon as I come out and go back to go in again, I can see what I have to do.
first got the saw and I was um, sharpening the blade, the guys saw me sharpening and I was using two files because I didn't have, I didn't realize what I could do with the blade or could not do. And then once I started, you know, figuring out what the blade, how the blade could be sharpened, then it was a lot easier for me to do. I'm just taking some of this stuff off the top there. And that's why I spray it when I go to use um, the saw again. I'll spray WD-40 on here. And you can use anything at all, anything that's wet, and it'll actually clean that off. I like to use a WD-40 because it seems to lubricate the bearings a little bit. So again, you know, all I'm doing is just sharpening that very tip, but I'm keeping the blade at the 10 degree angle, or the file. start sharpening you can see that it's, the file sort of being held back but after three files it's starting to move easy that's when I know that I have that point off there. I can't see the point I just know it's there I can see it. They feel excellent to me. Yep. I'm not going to worry about, like I say, trying to set this blade because I can see that it's set good and I'm just going to keep using it. Uh, what I was saying there is uh, when guys first saw me first t uh, sharpening these with hand files, it would take you a good hour and a half or maybe a full hour to sharpen the whole blade and then with a file Sometimes you're not getting, you know, if the file's not a good file, and who knows what's good today. You hope you buy good tools that come from China. You don't know if they made good ones, where it came from, or whatever. Most files are pretty good, though, I have to say. But what I'm getting at is people were complaining that it was taking me so long, and, you know, if I want $30 an hour to do what I do, how am I going to get $30 an hour for the blade? Well, how do you get any money, any amount of money back? I mean... It doesn't matter how much time you spend on something, how do you get that money back unless you charge when you cut? So that's the whole point there. It's not a matter of, you know, how do you, or where do you get it? You know where to get it. When you sell the wood, that's where you get your cost. And if you don't, then you're foolish. You know, everybody expects free stuff. Uh, and it's, life is not like that. I mean, a lot of times, if you look at some of the prices of the of things, when we were kids, I remember a pair of shoes to go to school when I was a little kid was $20. But those shoes were made out of genuine leather. Today, shoes at Walmart are still $20. You know, and you think, so, well, that's the same price that they were when I was a kid. Yeah, but it's not the same shoe, not even near. Same thing with your clothing and stuff. The only thing that I think's gotten better are tires, and the price of tires hasn't gone down. Okay.
feel that sharp point in there when you run your thumb over it. Yep, very good. So that's how I sharpen blades and it comes out real well for me. And you'll see I'm going to cut this uh, log that I have on here. I'm going to cut that up just as soon as I get this blade sharpened and then you'll be able to see just how good it cuts. And when I sharpen, like I was saying, I don't know if you heard me before, but when you sharpen blades and you're and it's not oak or it's oak, you don't get this buildup on here. Like we, before I started cutting these pines, I, these teeth were clean because oak doesn't give you that sap. Oak sap is a lot thinner than what the pine sap is. It's not like like a glue. All I'm doing is rolling this in there. I'm not trying to sharpen it. When I sharpen these then, um, just so you know, I'm not trying to put a point on the uh, tooth. And what I mean by that is I'm not trying to bring it to a point like this way and this way. I'm trying to put a point the length of the tooth. So that's why when you grind it, you want to have a flat piece of metal there. You don't want it to be where you're, um, you know, grinding a, a point on there. Because a point's not going to do, do the cutting. You need something wider than a point that's more like a knife. So with one tooth set one way and one tooth set the other way and one tooth going straight, it covers an eighth of an inch gap in there. So it's like an eighth of an inch blade that's sharp on one side to do the cutting. And that's what makes the makes it cut.
good. And I, I try to check everyone with my thumb like this in case I've missed one. Sometimes you might miss a tooth or you didn't quite cut it the way you should have. I'm just taking some of the sap off there. Here's the one that was get lost. Now when you run the file against the top of this to clean it, you want to keep the file on the, all on that side. If you put it on this side, you're filing the edge of the tooth that's set upward. So you don't want to do that. I'm just cleaning it off by running the file along the edge there. Alright, so I'm going to shut the camera off while I sharpen the rest of this. There's not that much uh, on here to sharpen it. I'm probably more than halfway. And then I'll get back to you on it. Okay, and you can see it cut.